There's a story in the Bible about the God of Israel losing in battle to the God of another nation. Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. Before we get to that story, I want to talk briefly about another story and ask a question about it. This other story is found in 2 Kings 18 and 19, and it tells the story of the king of Judah, Hezekiah, throwing off vassalage under the Assyrian king, Sennacherib. This angers the Assyrian king who mounts an invasion and comes in from the north, destroys the land in the kingdom of Israel, destroys most of the land of Judah, gets to Jerusalem. Sennacherib's own inscription says, I trapped him in his capital city like a bird in a cage. Just before he's going to destroy Jerusalem, God intervenes because of a prayer that is offered by Hezekiah and another one that is offered by Isaiah. God kills 185,000 Assyrian troops, which is obviously not historical. But the text states that Sennacherib got up the next day, saw that everybody was dead, and it says he got up and left, obviously retreating. Now the question is, who won this battle? Was this a victory on the part of Sennacherib? Or was this a victory on the part of Hezekiah? Very clearly, this is considered a victory on the part of Hezekiah, particularly in light of the way God's intervention is represented. So take that thought, and now let's go look at a parallel story. Second Kings 3, there's a new Moabite king under vassalage to the nation of Israel. That king decides to throw off vassalage to Israel, which angers the Israelite king. And he gets the king of Judah and the king of Edom to form a coalition. And they mount an invasion into Moab. And they destroy most of the land of Moab. And they get to the capital city. And they have the king trapped in his city. And just as they're about to take the city, the king offers his heir to the throne as a sacrifice on the city wall. The text immediately says there was great fury against Israel. And using the same verbs used to describe Sennacherib's retreat, says that Israel got up and left. Now, the phrase great fury here, when it's used in historical narratives, only ever refers to divine fury. So it was a deity who caused Israel's retreat from Moab. What deity could that have been? The plain sense of the text is that this human sacrifice successfully catalyzed the intervention of the Moabite patron deity, Chemosh. There's no rational case to make that Adonai, the God of Israel, became angry with Israel and drove them out of Moab because the king of Moab sacrificed his heir to the throne. Now, when this coalition mounted this invasion, there was a prophet who had a prophecy from the God of Israel saying, I will deliver Moab into your hands. That failed. That simply did not happen. There is no case to make that Moab was delivered into their hands. So this story is directly parallel to what happened with Sennacherib and Hezekiah. Remember who you think won that battle. Now tell me who won the battle between Moab and Israel. According to the concept of divine warfare in ancient Southwest Asia, your battles were not really your own work. They were the work of your patron deities. And so the battle here is not between the coalition of Edom, Israel, and Judah and the Moabites. The battle is between the Moabite patron deity Chemosh and the God of Israel, Adonai. And in this story, the God of Israel loses. The author's clearly not happy about that, and they're clearly trying to be as succinct and as unclear as possible. But there's only one rational way to read this story, and that is that the God of Israel lost in battle to the patron deity of another nation.